Houston, we are complete with the environment check. Oh, Roger, APC is deacting work. You're looking at arguably one of the most interesting people in the world. Maybe even the universe. Our mission specialist. His name is Scott Parazinski. And we got to meet him at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Between 1994 and 2007, he flew five missions on the Space Shuttle. I'm getting it, Jim. Don't worry. Completing seven spacewalks. And after he retired, he was inducted into NASA's Astronaut Hall of Fame. By the way, Parazinski is a physician. Oh, and he also likes to go exploring inside volcanoes. Hey everybody, it's Scott. I'm at uh, Level Zero Messiah Volcano. This is uh, probably the craziest thing I've ever done. But, but that's not even Scott Parazinski's most interesting accomplishment. In 2009, he became the first person in history to have both flown in space and climbed the summit of Mount Everest. You know, I, I've been an explorer my entire life. I started uh, climbing when I was in my teens and uh, you know, actually one of the, the most beautiful things I've ever seen from space is flying directly over the Himalayas. And I could look straight down on the summit of the tallest mountain in the world. And, and so I had this beautiful blow up of Mount Everest above my desk for many years. And I decided, you know, I've been daydreaming about this long enough. It's time to go do it. Perzinski first attempted to summit Everest in 2008, but didn't make it to the top due to a back injury. In May of 2009, he tried again and succeeded. It took me a couple of attempts, but I did make it to the top of the world, and, and I made it a round trip, very important. <laughs> I think I'm drawn to physical and uh, intellectual challenge, and so one of the things I love about space flight and also mountaineering and, and deep sea diving is it, it forces us to be you know, really creative, solving enormous technical challenges through technology to make it safe to go there, to perform science there, to support life. I'm really drawn to things that, that challenge us uh, physically as well as technologically. Parazinski remained the only person to have flown in space and summited Everest until 2018, when Italian astronaut Maurizio Celli also reached the top. During his career as an astronaut, Parazinski spent 57 days in space. Ready for the day there. And one of his spacewalks is considered to be one of the most dangerous of all time. This is going to be a big day for NASA. Parazinski's goal? To repair a damaged solar wing on the International Space Station. We were more or less at the limit of the uh, station arm's reach. To do this, he was attached to the end of a robotic arm that was 90 feet long, moving him further away from the safety of the station's airlock than any astronaut in history. Two deployed to three. Yay! All right. Parazinski got it done. Nice teamwork. Discovery's landing gear is down and locked in place. I was very driven as a kid. Uh, I had very supportive parents. I, I was a big dreamer. And uh, my folks were very adventurous. So as a kid, we traveled all over the world. I lived in West Africa, the Middle East, and around Europe. And uh, so I saw life as an adventure. NASA inducted Parazinski into the Astronaut Hall of Fame in 2016. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Parazinski, founder of Fluidity Technologies and inventor of FT Aviator. Today, he's the CEO of a startup that develops flight technology for drones. One opportunity led to the next. I've continued to try and uh, push, uh, push myself, but also as an inventor, push technology, and it's been a lot of fun. 